Hi, my name is Michael Harmon, and this is the Thinking Man's Universe Part 2, The Myth of the Cosmological Principle. So, where did the Big Bang go wrong, and why didn't we adjust it to the hierarchy after all these same mistakes we've always made? Certainly, we saw that coming. Well, the fact is, we did see that coming, and the very thing that uh, led the Big Bang astray was actually designed to fix these Bayesian, or at least one aspect of this type of Bayesian error, this repeated error we make in our cosmologies. And that error was that the universe was centered on something. Uh, clearly we had made uh, the mistake of thinking, well, it's centered on the Earth. The Earth is the center of the universe uh, when we first started out. And then, well, we realized, oh, well, the Sun is the center of the universe. And then, nope, it wasn't that the Milky Way galaxy was a little island universe in the void. No, and by the time they discovered that there were other galaxies um, way beyond the Milky Way, they said, we got to stop this. I mean, it was pretty obvious that something was going wrong. They didn't realize how comprehensive their error was, but it was a good step to, to say, well, let's not center the universe on anything. And uh, the prevailing notion was that, well, you look up in the night sky and you can see the galaxies are all so evenly dispersed as far as we can look, just scattered everywhere uh, like dust. That's how it is everywhere. And this is called the, the cosmological principle, that at the largest scales that we can see, um, that the universe is evenly distributed, is homogene homogeneous, Two, that it's isotrophic, and three, that all the rules work the same everywhere. These three rules, these three axioms, make up the cosmological principle. And while the last one, that all the rules work the same uh, everywhere, may be um, supportable, the first two are not in a Bayesian sense. Um, they do keep the universe from being centered on anything, and they do a beautiful job of that, and they served a purpose to, to put an end to that notion, but that wasn't all the mistakes we were making. At the largest scales, you can, you can project the homogeneity a long ways, way past what you can see of it. That's for sure. That's Bayesian, in fact. To look at the homogeneity we see across the visible universe and project it out thousands of times, maybe a million times to some degree, beyond what we can see is perfectly reasonable. Uh, it's Bayesian. However, to project it infinitely is not Bayesian. And the reason is, when you look upscale in a material hierarchy, your sample size plummets. This is inevitable. It's structural. When you look upscale in a material hierarchy, you are looking at ever smaller cross-sections of ever larger structures. When you look downscale, just the opposite happens. From right here, I can see liquids, solids, gases, uh, all manner of molecular arrangements and exotic um, con you know, boundary conditions like plasma on the light filaments and electronics in the displays. I, I have an enormous sample size when I look down in a hierarchy. When I look up, my sample size plummets. All I will see is homogeneity if I look up scale. It's almost inevitable. Imagine yourself ensconced on the electron orbiting a water molecule atom, and you look out into a murky drop of water. You will see trillions upon trillions of atoms ranging off into the infinite distance. You would think the entire universe is clearly made of this, the most consistent uh, symmetry of uh, water molecules ever. And that would be the case even if that drop of water was surrounded by an ocean, but eventually that symmetry would dissipate and end. This is the nature of a hierarchy. You cannot depend on one Bayesian examination. You have to terminate that Bayesian examination with a larger scale Bayesian examination. This is the nature of a Bayesian examination of a hierarchy. Take the sunrise, for instance. If we watch the sunrise, we could watch it for a million sunrises. We could watch it for a million years of sunrises. And we would say, well, clearly, it's going to do this forever. It'll go on forever. A larger scale examination of the statistical distribution of stars in the galaxy and their lifetimes and seeing them end and how that's distributed shows us that even our sun will come to an end. A larger scale view of the hierarchy does the same thing to the cosmological principle. Rather than taking the symmetry we see at the very largest scales that we can observe in the visible universe and projecting that out to infinity. We ought to take a larger scaled examination, Bayesian examination, of all the scalar hierarchy from quarks to galaxy clusters and presume that this, this continues at least one more time and examine the data we do have for some sort of dissipation or termination of the homogeneity of the universe. 
The following graphic presentation will show how the cosmological principle and the homogeneity we detect at the largest scales is most likely an artifact of scale and not a reasonable principle by which to characterize the universe. In this graphic, we see a stylized representation of a spherically expanding Big Bang phenomena with three magnified cross-sections, the smallest, most magnified of which, section C, represents the span of the visible universe. If the distance d from the center of our hypothetically enormous but ultimately finite expanding Big Bang phenomena is, say, a hundred times the diameter of region A, and region A is a hundred times that of region B, and B a hundred times that of the visible universe, region C, then the deviation from pure homogeneity we might expect to see from one side of the visible universe to the other would be less than one part per million. In other words, the radial density gradient we can detect across region A from the side nearest the Big Bang to its furthest side, seen as shading in the graphic, is diluted to virtual invisibility across the comparatively minuscule span of the visible universe, section C. The previous graphic could be true, and still we would have no way of knowing with our current data. Right now, the best we can achieve in resolution of the uh, variations in the cosmic microwave background radiation is 25 parts per million. If in fact the previous graphic is anywhere close to reality, then we are still 25 times short of the resolution we would need to see the one millionth deviation across the visible universe. Indeed, the first two axioms of the cosmological principle are obsolete. It is far less likely that the universe is homogeneous out to infinity at the largest scales and isotropic out to infinity, that is, it looks the same no matter where we were in the universe, it is far more likely that it is as diverse at larger scales as it is at smaller scales, and it's only an artifact of us looking upscale that makes it seem otherwise. We should replace the first two axioms of the cosmological principle with the finite rule and the plurality principle. These two axioms are far more probable descriptors of the universe across all scales than the cosmological principles, homogeneity, and isotropy of the universe. In the next section, we will examine the universe from Bayesian perspective at infinitesimal scales and vast scales and try to uh, develop a few processes we might use to project the hierarchy one more scale beyond that at the Big Bang. Thanks for listening. My name is Michael Harmon, and this has been The Thinking Man's Universe, Part 2.